Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Belgium once again and we're going to revisit a brewery who you saw me review just a little while ago actually but we're going to look at one of the different ranges of beers that they do. So we're going to go back to Erkvelde and review another beer from Brauerei van Steenberg. You saw me review the, one of the Augustine beers a couple of videos ago but this time we're going to have a look at a beer from the Pirat range. So you might have seen me review the Pirat beer a good couple of years ago, now the original one, but today Today we're going to have a taste of the triple hop version. So this guy comes in at 10.5%. It's hopped, I believe, with Czech Sats, um, Aurora and some Cascades, so hence why it's called triple hop. And um, from what I gather, um, Beer Advocate were listing this beer as a Belgian style IPA, but um, Rate Beer had this down as a kind of Belgian strong ale. So I think it's going to be one of these beers that's a golden beer, obviously, a Belgian light kind of beer, but it's one of the high fermentation ones, obviously, that comes in at 10.5% so I think it's going to be one of these really kind of just strong golden ale type beers from Belgium so should be really interesting beer this I did enjoy the original Pirat I enjoyed the beer that I had from Augustine as well and you know Brauerei van Steenberger are um, you know a really quite well known brewery and really quite a good brewery actually in my experience so I'm looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website link to my other reviews that I've done from Brown Ivan Steenberg before no doubt I will add some more from the other ranges in the near future there's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you. That is constantly being added to, of course. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brauerei van Steenberger then, onto my brewery notes. So the history of the van Steenberger brewery goes back to the year 1784 and at this time there was hundreds of breweries in the Flanders region brewing beer basically because it was actually safer to drink the beer than it was to drink the water. But this brewery is located in Erkvelde and it was founded by Jean-Baptiste de Bruin under the name de Pierre. But following his death, his wife Angelina continued the brewery and she in turn passed on to her cousin Joseph Schelfo and uh, he assisted her for many years and was really familiar with the brewing beforehand but his daughter Marguerite married, married Paul van Steenberg who was a professor of microbiology at the Ghent Brewing School. Now Paul van Steenberg took control of the brewery following the end of the First World War and he changed the name of the brewery to Brewery Bio after the beer that was produced at the same time but he was very interested in politics and he served as the mayor of Erkvelde and a senator but he was really a businessman and he launched several other beers during his tenure such as the Bio uh, Bio's Flemish Bourgogne, which was an old brown ale, also the Leutebock as well, which was a lager beer, and he also made major investments in the brewery, including a new brewing hall, new tanks, and he initiated the switch from wooden barrels to glass bottles as well when it came to actually selling the beer. But in truth, Paul's, you know, he was really a businessman, and this always kind of outweighed his passion for the brewing, and they put the brewery into a cooperation as a means to cut costs. But all this time, um, his wife Margaret had been with their son, Joseph Van Steenberg, and she really saw this as a sellout because she had inherited the brewery from her father. However, Joseph actually inherited her passion for brewing. So when his father died in 1962, Joseph took over the management of the brewery and focused the brewery on producing the high fermentation beers. But like his father before, he was also passionate about politics and he only really focused on the brewery at the age of 64 after he served as a mayor and a senator in the Belgian pa uh, parliament, of course, as well. And this ended in 1978. So he got rid of the malt, malt house and the hop plantations that had been planted by his grandfather father Joseph Shelfo and decided instead that the brewery would purchase its raw materials but with very very strict specifications. So in 1978 the company also acquired the recipe for the be beer that the Augustine Friars, the, uh, the, you saw me review the beer a wee while ago, they have acquired the rights to brew these recipe of beers in 1978 in the Ghent Monastery. These were fine tuned over the next couple of years and first released in 1982 and he also completed his own range of high fermentation beers during this time. But upon launching the range there really wasn't such demand for these high percentage beers. However, since 2000, the market really 
increased uh, for speciality beers and thanks to this the brewery survived its kind of troubled times and continued to grow. So in 1990 Joseph's son Paul took over the running of the company and he modernised the brewery and built a fully automated brewing hall, a computerised barrel filling installation and a water purification installation as well as well as a new bottling line and uh, a steam plant with natural gas as well. But he was joined by his cousin Jeff Verselli at the brewery and he worked on expanding the company's export market mainly to the US and Italy of course. So as I say, these guys are, they're a pretty big operation now. Their beers get exported all across the world and Pirat is probably one of the more kind of recognisable um, Belgian beer brands, if you like. If you go to any good beer dealer, of course, you more than likely you will either see the original version of this or if you're quite lucky, you will be able to get a hold of this uh, triple hot one as well. I think this one is a little bit harder to get than the original one. You might see the Alstein, uh, Augustine beers as well. Uh, you might also see that that beer sold as St. Stephanus as well because uh, apparently the, the one that I reviewed for you before, the Augustine Grand Cru, that is also sold under the St. Stephanus name as well. So you may well uh, come across that particular beer, but that is from Brauerei van Steenberg too. But really, really nice uh, brewery, this one. They do a lot of good beers. So check out the brewery website in the description below and you can read a little bit more about that for yourself. But it is cool to see a brewery that is quite old be, uh, you know, kind of surviving today. So yeah, check that out. Follow them on Facebook and all all these kind of things and you can keep up to date with the latest goings on at the brewery but that's really all you need to know about the the brewery just now so let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself then so like i mentioned to you this one is a 10.5 percent beer and um, they hop this with ja uh, zatitz hops or sats hops however you want to call them from uh, from the czech republic they also put some aurora in here which is an american hop and also some cascade again which again is an american hop so it should be a really interesting beer this one i do like these big belgian beers that they brew with the um with the American hops, they always turn out to be quite interesting. Of course, you have the Duvel Triple Hop Citra, and which was a really nice one. I really want to get a hold of the the Duvel Triple Hop Amarillo at some point as well. But there you can see, really nicely presented beer. This one, um, I do like these these Pirat labels, and this. I need to try and steam that off. And there you can see there is a special bottle cap on this one. So of course, I will be keeping that as well. And um, but it tells you on the back here, Pirat Triple Hop is a balanced beer the distinct character of hops achieved by adding four types of hops to the brewing process. I forgot to mention that actually, they do add a hop called Tetra to this one, which um, I hadn't heard of before. But um, yeah, so it should be a really interesting beer this one. Without further ado, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting. Really looking forward to this, like I said. Nice bit of a smoky opening there and we'll get it out and into the glass. So we'll just be careful with this one, of course, because with these Belgian beers, because of the bottle fermentation, you can get quite a big head on these beers sometimes. We'll sugar it up actually and just try and get a little bit out of it at the end. But there you can see it's poured really quite nicely actually. Stick the bottle cap up there with the others. But yeah, you know, interesting looking beer this one, kind of as I was expecting it to be. So you can see with this beer it's poured a nice kind of bright golden colour. There's a solid half finger of a frothy I would say slightly cream coloured head, this one it's not quite perfect white, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards uh, the bottom of that head there, but you know overall it looks pretty nice and like I was saying I think this is going to be one of these uh, you know, just typical sort of strong Belgian golden type ales. If I put my fingers behind the glass there, you can see there is a degree of transparency to this one, but a very, very slight haze. But, you know, overall, kind of looks as I expected it to. Like I say, um, Beer Advocate had this one listed as a, a Belgian IPA. Um, Rate Beer had it listed as a Belgian strong ale, actually. So let's just see how we get on with the aroma of this one. But I will say when you opened up, you could smell a little bit of that typical kind of bready, doughy, yeasty sort of thing off this beer. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. Yeah. So while the beer's settled, definitely like I was saying, you get that nice bready, doughy, yeasty sort of thing. There's maybe a little touch of a clovey spice in there, a sort of white bready quality coming out of it. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's actually quite a sweet bready note that's coming out of this beer. When you sugar it up a little bit more, you get a bit more of a kind of grainy touch coming out of this one. Yeah, definitely a bit more grainy when you, you sugar the beer up. There's almost a little bit of a kind of bread and butter kind of thing to this. It definitely comes across as a bit of a kind of wholemeal, toasty, bready kind of thing. There's definitely a little bit of a, a caramel to this beer. Definitely some kind of brown sugar in there. Maybe a little bit biscuity as well, to be honest with you. 
yeah, and you, if, when you sugar the beer up, you do start to get a little bit more of the hoppy qualities out of it as well. When it's settled, it leans more towards that kind of malty, yeasty side of things. The Belgian beers, of course, are all about the yeast, I always think. But yeah, in terms of the hoppy side of this beer, nice sort of floral, grassy kind of thing coming out of it. Nice bit of juicy fruit as well. There is a bit of a kind of lemony citrus to this one. But I do think it's got a little bit of a... Yeah, there's a little bit of a kind of, I would say, grapefruity note to this one. There's definitely a bit of that grapefruity note coming out from the Cascade. There's a little bit of a... How would you say? There's definitely a little bit of a, a kind of... This grassy and floral sort of thing to this one. But there's definitely an element of a herbal quality too, which will be coming. That kind of comes, it has that noble element that you expect from the Czech Sats hop. But definitely a little bit of a, I would say, yeah, definitely a little bit of that noble hop quality in there. But it's also a little bit herbal too. But yeah, some nice kind of pe uh, peary sort of apple esters coming out of the beer too. But definitely just a little touch of that grapefruit there, that really distinct kind of cascade uh, aroma coming out of the beer. But without further ado then, let's take a taste of this one and see how we get on. So this one is the Pirat Triple Hop from Brauer Ivan Steenberger in, in Ertvelde, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, near Ghent in Flanders in Belgium. Let's get stuck into this beer then. Proust, saute. That's pretty nice actually, I have to say that with this beer. It really has just a nice bready base to it. That's the first thing that's striking me about this one as I taste it. But yeah, really quite a nice... Um, the, the bready quality to this one is really interesting. You can feel that nice doughy, bready yeast just sort of blanket the middle of your tongue there. And it gradually becomes sweeter and sweeter as you go further into the aftertaste of the beer. There is a bit of a grainy quality starts to emerge as well. But yeah, like I say, that white bready quality in there. There's maybe a little touch of kind of spice in there too, but really there's definitely a bit of that grainy quality starts to come out as you get further and further into the flavour. And some of the sweeter notes come out. It starts to come out. It's quite caramelly, but you can feel it's almost like a kind of caramel wafer that's coming out of the, the flavour of this beer as well. And there is some biscuity elements to it as well. The, the malt base and the yeasty qualities in this beer are really quite interesting actually. So just pay attention to that when you're trying this beer. But yeah, I like just how everything's going together in this one. It's all about how the the flavours kind of blend together. I like the little bit of a kind of hoppy edge to this. I was expecting this one to be a little bit more bitter than uh, some of the other Belgian beers I've had to be honest considering it's, it's you know it's sold as triple hop but the bitterness in this beer really isn't all that big. It actually brings out quite a nice juicy fruity quality to the beer. So in the back corners of the palate you can definitely pick up a little bit of that earthiness. I would hazard a guess that that's coming from the, the Jatets, the Sats hop that are in this one. It's got a nice little bit of that noble, slightly sweet earthiness there. There's a little bit of herbal quality just in front of that, but you can feel that nice floral quality just come out along the front sides of your palate there. There is a little bit of that floral spicy note uh, towards the front of the tongue then. Round the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and uh, more grassy, I would say. And of course, behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you've got some of these nice fruity qualities starting to come out of the beer. noble cop qualities to this one are really really nice acts. I think the Aurora is supposed to give you a nice sort of noble quality to the beer as well but behind the front curve of the palate of course as I say you get that little oily bubble and that's where your fruity esters start to come out of the beer so for me with this one you can definitely feel that slightly darker flavour of grapefruit that'll be from the Cascade of course you can really feel that with this beer but on top of that there's definitely a little bit of a kind of lemony lemon I don't know if it's quite lemony quality, but there's definitely a lemony uh, um, sort of flavour to this beer. And it definitely has that nice kind of sharper citrusy sweetness to it. I always find the grapefruity flavours are a little bit darker. But there's as you go further into the aftertaste, there's a sort of um, 
peary, apple ester coming out of the beer, but it's almost got a little bit of an apricot flavour. I find that quite a few of these Belgian beers, it must be coming from the yeasts that they're using and just the way everything combines together. I always find that I get a little bit of apricot flavour from a lot of these beers. This one definitely reminds me of the little yogurts, the little munch bunch yogurts that my mum used to put in my lunchbox when I went to school actually. Alright guys, apologies for the edit there, my camera just decided, ooh, I don't have any memory on the memory card left, which was actually rubbish, it just does that sometimes. But I was just about to talk about the mouthfeel of this beer anyway. So with this one, I would definitely say full-bodied beer. I don't think there's much doubt in my mind about that. So yeah, full-bodied beer, this one. Carbonation's really smooth in this. This is probably one of the smoothest Belgian beers I've come across actually so far. Um, but it's really oily in terms of its mouthfeel. One of the more oily Belgian beers I've come across as well, I would say. There's a nice sort of um, hoppy bitterness to this one. It's, it, it does, as your mouth adjusts to this beer, you do start to get a little bit more of a kind of hoppy, bitter quality from it. It's particularly... Um, sort of spicy and floral and um, but there's a little bit of herbal and earthy quality just backing up as well and of course you've got the juicy fruits and um, just kind of backing this one out as well it's quite unusual actually to have a belgian beer that's got that nice noble hoppy quality to it if you like but also the the kind of american um grapefruity flavour. So it's a really quite interesting combination, this beer, more than anything else. But yeah, in terms of the malt base, um, you've got a nice bit of sweetness there. As I was saying, the smooth, bready quality is also coming out from the yeast, of course, as well. It's got that nice big doughy quality. But then I think it does get progressively sweeter and sweeter as uh, you drink more of this one. And at 10.5%, you know, it's, tip it's a typical Belgian beer. It covers the alcohol really, really well. But yeah, for me, it's a, you know it's another really solid Belgian beer. You know you can't really fault this one in any way. I do like this sort of combination that it has. The particularly quirky thing about me uh, about this beer for me is just how oily and how kind of smooth the carbonation is, and the combination of flavours works really well. You know there's a good bit of bready quality to this one. Some nice sweet caramel coming out of it, like I was saying, and it's got that American um, fruity uh, flavour to it as well. I really just like how everything goes together in this one. And as I said at the start of the video, you know, Brauer Ivan Steinberg, they do some pretty damn awesome beer. So if you get the chance to try them, I highly recommend that you do. The original Pirat is a really, really nice beer as well. Um, this one I do quite like too. I need to see if there's any others in the range that I've not been able to review yet. And uh, the Augustine Grand Cru that I reviewed for you as well was uh, also really nice. So try any of the beers from Brauer Ivan Steinberg and I think you're going to get um, a top quality beer. And I think you'll enjoy it if you are into your Belgian type beers. So yeah, I think that's a good point to kind of sign off on this review then. So this one was the Pirat Triple Hop from Brauer Ivan Steinberg in Erkvelde, just outside again in Flanders in Belgium. But um, a really, uh, just, you know, a really nice beer this one. I'm glad that I got to review this for you on the channel and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on it. So until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Brauer Ivan Steinberg as well. Uh, and do, you know, let, as I say, check out all my social media and things like that and I will catch you guys very soon. I've got quite a few Belgian beers to work through for you over the next little while so I hope you're enjoying this uh, you know this focus that I'm having on the Belgian beers at the moment but until the next time thank you for watching slant you just now and I will catch you guys very soon the Pirat triple hop from Brauer Ivan Steinberg in Erkvelde in Flanders in Belgium until the next time slant you just now skull Proust <laughs>